Hey everyone, it's Chris here from Everyday Survival Gear, and today we're just going to talk about this uh, magnificent little light called the Thorfire TG06S and its uh, counterpart, the counterfeit Thorfire TG06S. So, years ago, I was sent this TG06S via Thorfire, the original one here, to review. So, I've got a full review up off that uh, if you want to watch that. So, this isn't about the light, well, it is about the light. But not about the light stock. This is about modding these lights. So these lights are super friendly to mod. So I'm going to show you how to do it so you don't stuff yours up like I stuffed up mine. So right now inside this light, if we can have a little look, excuse here. I don't think this is going to focus, but we can try. I've got a uh, Nishia 219C running on a 3 amp Nangish driver. So basically because I changed the driver, you can unfocus now buddy. Any time today will do. So um, basically now because I changed the driver, you can no longer use a standard AA battery, but you can only run it on a 14500, but that really doesn't matter because look at the nice tint and the nice outputs that you get. Nice constant current, low battery protection, like low voltage protection, reverse polarity protection that comes on these uh, 105C style drivers. And of course I've got my original here, that I didn't know how to undo, so I'll show you guys how to undo this. My original one is a little bit more done up than the uh, other one that I just showed you. This has got a lit tail cap. It's got one of those convoy drivers that's a direct drive that's got the ramping mode. So it starts on high all the time. And then if you double click that should take you to low. And then five clicks will might get you into ramping mode. See how it's kind of like ramping like so. Um, and this is running a Cree XPL in cold white from what I can tell. So trying to get these apart is a little bit confusing because they don't conventionally come apart like a conventional style light. So you can see where I bent mine trying to get it apart the first time. So we'll take it apart and see what's under the skirt as some people would like to say. It does have a retaining ring here. Maybe I'm the only idiot that couldn't take this apart, who knows. So the retaining ring does come off like normal, but the first time when you try and get it off, it's really, really hard. Ah. And because I bent mine, now it's even harder. And we'll fast forward this. We'll add some circus music to it. Okay, I hope the guys can see that. Um, this one's actually running a different setup to the other one. The other one has the um, Cree XPL in it with a uh, direct drive. This one's actually running a named or what you would call a 10C style driver. I'm pretty sure it's convoy branded but that meant I had to do some work to the um, retaining ring and the retaining ring is pretty thin right now. So I'll show you guys the retaining ring compared to the other one. Uh, that's quite funny. And I've done all that work by hand, so I literally soldered it back, and not soldered, sanded it back, all by hand, because I didn't want to over sand it, and be left with my retaining ring. So taking these out, right, oh, so <laughs> that's the uh, retaining ring from my new modded one, that's how thin it is, where's the old one going, where's the old head, oh, lost it, oh, here it is. And that's the old one. So you can... S oh shit, I'm not even on camera. Idiot. That's the old one, the original. And that's what's in the new one. So you can see I did sand it back quite a bit to make this um, 7135 driver work. So basically when you want to get this out, you kind of just angle it out. Like so, you got to like get it on its side, which is a bit of a pain. I know it's not the most ideal setup. But that's the only way you can fit such a big driver in. You could actually sand this down a little bit and then um, it'll fit in easier. But I didn't really think about doing that first. But there is a little bit of room to sand it down if that's what you want to do. So just like so. Get it out. And then you just got to flip it around so it's on its side. And then the... Um, And then, then the shelf can be undone by unscrewing it out. So, I'll see if I can undo it just with 
sticky netting one side only. <coughs> Inappropriate direct home. Nope, I gotta do both sides. Um, I should be able to actually get it over like so. Sorry, guys, I know I'm probably not doing it on camera properly. There we go. And then the whole shelf just comes out in one piece. Okay, so um, this one here has a Nishia 219C on a direct thermal path copper board uh, with a uh, 105 style or well, convoy 7135 driver, uh, 3 amps. So, yeah, so um, yeah. Basically, the drivers sit on top of the pill. Focus! So the drivers sit on top of the pill like so. Whichever driver that you have. And um, then the retaining ring goes over the top and pushes it down. Which is why I had to sand this retaining ring back. Because some of these 7135s were grounding out on this retaining ring. So yeah. So depending on the driver, you should be able to fit it in with... I'll say minimum work, but if you're like me and you're going to um, sand it back by hand, it can be a bit of a pain in the ass. But just remember, 17mm driver and 16mm LED and standard size, uh, what's it called? Standard size towel cap. Um, one of the convoy lit towel caps fits. So we'll take these outside now, put them both back together, and we'll see how they do. The friggin' awesome lights. Wait and, wait and see. Alright guys, now the fun part, so why we like these lights so much is because they use standard size driver and part, SMO reflector, super super compact and bright, so we'll turn it on, this is the direct drive one with um, Simon's driver and the Cree XPO in it, so you can see it does amazing amount of lumens, only limited by the battery, but you're still getting about, I'll dare say, 13, 1400 lumens, which is only limited by the battery. Like it's super super bright. We'll go to the tree at 100 meters. It just makes it. But the SMO reflector is quite small. But look at that. I am using an older camera today because um, I'm trying to mix it up and see which one works better. So if we double click, we should get into the lower mode. Um, yeah, so this is one of those convoy ramping drivers. So if we have a play with it, and if I click five times, it should go into ramping mode. Yeah, there it is, it's ramping. And it's getting higher and higher. It should reset, I think. No, I just went back in the high mode. But that's okay. Uh, we'll try the one. Eh, it's gone back around. So it does work ramping. And we can pretty much set any of these as the high mode. That looks pretty good there. Oh, I've done it wrong. I'm supposed to turn, turn it off. We'll try the, um, the other one that I built and see how that looks. Okay, so this is the other TG06S. This is the clone one that I got from um, eBay for about five Australian dollars, six or six Australian dollars. This is the one that has the um, the Nang's driver, so the three amp driver and the uh, what's it called the Nishia 219C. So only seven or eight hundred lumens, but you can see a super nice tint. And because they're standard sizes, there's no need to worry. You know, you can have a nice tint light that lights up your whole backyard like so. Ooh, change modes. That's low mode. You can see it's on. Then medium mode, and then high mode, and plus you get all the other bonuses off the um, off the 105C drivers too, which is good. If we go to the tree, uh, only just makes it barely, but yeah, nice clean beam, but it does get hot, so yeah. And you do have to run it on um, high drain 14500s or otherwise uh, it's not really going to work. Anyways guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. As always, uh, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe and thanks for watching guys.